everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Principles of Microeconomics by N. Gregory Mankiw. We're going to be looking at the sixth edition, and we're going to be doing chapter two, problem number six. This problem asks us to classify a number of different scenarios and or statements into whether they are positive statements or normative statements. So it's worth reviewing what's the difference between those two things. And the easy way of thinking about it is a positive statement isn't necessarily a statement that's optimistic or happy or whatever, but it's one that is free of value judgment, that is more factual, and that is a statement that can be either supported or refuted with evidence. On the other hand, a normative statement is a statement that is of that value judgment type nature, that you can almost think of positive versus normative as fact versus opinion, and sort of a good taxonomy to have there. And the normative statements are going to be of the value judgment nature, so no amount of evidence is going to totally tell us whether that statement is right or wrong. And the distinction is actually usually best shown through examples, so it's really helpful to go through a number of them here. Part A of this question says, society faces a short-run trade-off between inflation and unemployment, and asks us to clarify whether this statement is positive or normative. So we say, well, there's this short run trade-off, Well, we can look at data and say, well, how do these two quantities, those being inflation and unemployment, how do they tend to move together? And we can actually look at factual evidence and either support or refute this statement, and there's no policy prescription, there's no value judgment inherent in this, so this is going to be a positive statement. Part B says, a reduction in the rate of money growth will reduce the rate of inflation and asks us to classify that as positive or normative. So we can think about what we have going on here. Again, this statement is mostly of a factual nature. It says, if we reduce the rate of money growth, we will reduce the rate of inflation. So we could actually test that, say, well, let's look at situations where the first thing happened and see whether the second thing happened. Again, this is a question where evidence is going to help us not only guide our answer, but actually get to a definitive answer. So again, this is an example of a positive statement. Part C of the question says, the Federal Reserve should reduce the rate of money growth. So if we think about this here, we say, well, is this a factual statement or is this a value judgment? And I'll give you a hint. Whenever you see the word should, that's a tip off that it's going to be a value judgment. Right. that we can think of the role that data could play in confirming or refuting this statement, that we could collect a lot of data on the effects of money growth and the impact it has on the economy, et cetera, et cetera. But no matter how much of that we have, there's still going to be a value judgment involved in making a prescription about what the Federal Reserve should do. So it's important to keep in mind that even a well-reasoned argument that has a policy prescription is still a normative statement rather than a positive one. So this statement here gets classified as normative. Part D says, society ought to require welfare recipients to look for jobs and asks us to classify that as a positive or normative statement. And again, the words ought to, really that's just a should in sheep's clothing, right? Just a should in disguise. So whatever tip-off we got when we see the word should, should probably also happen when we see the phrase ought to. Because again, if we were to think about this statement, we could gather some evidence and we could say, well, let's look at the impact on the economy when we require welfare recipients to look for jobs and when we don't. And we could see the factual impact of that, but there's still a value judgment jump to get from the factual impact to say that society ought to do something, and therefore this statement is classified as normative. The last part of the problem states, lower tax rates encourage more work and more saving. So we can think about this, and we will classify this as either positive or normative. And we can say, well, we could look at the data to answer this question. That we could either think about how experimentally to put lower tax rates in place, or barring that, we could say, let's look at times when tax rates have been lower and try to see the impact that those lower tax rates have had. 
and see the impact specifically that they have on working and saving. So this is in fact a question that data could pretty completely shed light on and it doesn't really have a value judgment component to it and therefore this statement would be classified as a positive statement.